Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Stop, Drop, and Knit podcast, episode 77. I have missed you guys so much. Oh my goodness, it has been a while, maybe two months almost, since I have last recorded an episode. Happy fall, (laughs) y'all. That's just always so fun to say. So let's see, I'm recording today is Friday, September 22nd, and tomorrow is officially the first day of fall. So that means on Sunday, when you are watching this episode, hopefully it is going to be fall, which I, you know, as knitters, that's, it's just the best for so many reasons. So it's it's my favorite season. The weather is finally tolerable and shawls and sweaters and all the things. So, okay, we have such an exciting announcement today we as in i as in hi everybody if you don't know me already i'm lisa and this is my podcast stop drop and knit and i share all things knitting and spinning and natural dye related and ah i don't even know okay so I've got, I've got exciting news and I'm not going to keep you guys waiting. So let's just roll right into it and start with finished objects. Okay. So you guys are probably wondering what's so exciting about your shawl. All right, guys, my shawl is finished. So that's exciting. And we will get to the shawl in a minute, but I have a much bigger, much more exciting, to me anyway, finished object. At long last, my website and my shop is opening on Monday. That's tomorrow. If you guys are watching this on Sunday, my naturally dyed yarn shop is finally open. Oh my goodness, or opening tomorrow. It feels open, but it's not open. But It has been such a huge labor of love this summer. I can't even begin to express how satisfying it is having finished it and having it ready to share with you all. I'm just, I'm nervous. I have, I have all the feelings. I, I'm excited. I spent so much time this summer working on this project because I was determined, determined to open in September. And I'm glad that it is coinciding with the start of fall, which is really the start of knitting season. So in the description box below, you will find the links to my shop. It will be available for the public view. So right now, if you're watching this on Sunday, you'll get a locked screen. But come back right away on Monday and check out my website and my shop. And I mean, yeah, it's still, there's still things about it that are a work in progress. There's obviously like, it's not a thousand percent done, but it is like, it's like a hundred percent done, which is not a thousand, but it's, you, you know what I mean? It's everything's there. There will be updates, there will be, I just, I don't even know. I have plans and, ah. So my website is stopdropandknit.com. And the shop, you'll be able to access through that screen, but it's stopdropandknit.com slash shop. It's happening. I'm so excited. Okay. Um, as usual, I have a limited amount of time to record, but I really, really wanted to put up a podcast before the shop officially opens so that I could let you guys know because all of you viewers, like I have missed you guys so much this summer, but because of the shop and traveling and, you know, just things slowing down in the summer and really the shop and putting all my effort into that. I honestly haven't been knitting that much. So I feel like all of my progress on everything has been 
very slow, practically to non-existent. So it didn't really make sense for me to record an episode when I didn't really have that much like to show knitting wise and you know, it's all the energy into the website. I can't, I can't show that to you, but now I can tomorrow. Um, I think you guys can tell I am excited. So I obviously, this is another finished object. So I think we should just for the sake of time and driving you guys nuts, I think we should just move on. And let's talk about what am I wearing today? So I am wearing a shawl that I cast on a full year ago and I feel like I got a lot of progress done on this. I don't know how to wear it yet and this is going to annoy the crap out of all of you guys so I'm going to try to stop doing that. I'm just, I have so much excitement in my energy right now about the shop that I'm just, I'm very fidgety. So. I might have to might have to sit on my hands for a minute but okay so <laughs> a year ago on my birthday arrived a package from Wonderland Yarns for which I am a brand ambassador I feel like I've been a very bad brand ambassador lately because I've really not been keeping up with very many knitting projects but hopefully hopefully we'll be getting back to those um yeah, I've got some other projects I'm still finishing up that I've had for almost a year. Twists and Turn Shawl, MCAL by Stephen West, anyone? It's coming. I need to get on that before the next one starts. Um, anyway, so I got this beautiful yarn and I used almost all of it. There is the option to put tassely tassels on here and I do probably have enough yarn and the unicorn, which is this beautiful, like green, shiny one here. I'll stand up. So this is the unicorn base, which, um, oh my gosh, I don't have the labels. I should have the labels. It's gorgeous. It's got, I'll put it on the screen when I edit. It's got some kind of silk in it and it's really drapey and amazing. And then this gradient color that you see all throughout is one of their Blossoms Cakes, which is, it's actually, no, is it one of them or two? I used one. I used two skeins of Unicorn and one skein of Blossoms. So I don't remember the colorway names, but, all right, I'm gonna take this off. I'll never get it back on the right way. That's okay. Um, but I finished my going somewhere shawl. Oh my goodness, you guys, it's big. It's never gonna fit on the screen. But a year ago, it was started down here and I worked on it and worked on it. It's so pretty, it's so big. And, and then I put it away about at the halfway point, pretty much because Twists and Turns MCAL started and I was trying to keep up with that, failed miserably. Um, but I finally, finally finished it. I got so much of this done. You guys remember, if you watched my last podcast, you'll remember that I was traveling to Phoenix, Arizona during August, the beginning of August, when it was like 115 million gazillion degrees over there. And um, yeah, it was actually the project that I decided to take with me. And I took a few other things with me on that trip and I didn't pull anything out except the shawl. I was so determined to like make good progress on this. And I did, I got so much done. I knit during the events at the flute convention. I knit on the plane. I actually did not do any hotel knitting. I was just exhausted. There was a lot of flute going on there for four days. Um, but wow, you guys, like I don't feel like I've had this kind of energy podcasting in what feels like forever. <laughs> so I hope that you guys are okay with it. I just, I feel really good. I feel really excited happy. 
I finally finished this. I love it. I messed up though, and I'm gonna show you guys because part of the podcast experience is not just seeing everything go well, but you know, kind of showing off your mistakes too. And so I'm gonna own up to my mistakes. And honestly, by the time I realized that I had made a mistake, I was so far beyond that point that I was not going to rip it back. Because the way that I see it with a shawl, the only way you're going to notice that there's a mistake in the shape of the shawl is if I have it laid flat all the way out. And really, I'm not going to be displaying this on my wall at home. I'm going to be wrapping it around my neck. so. Even though the shape is a really cool feature of the shawl and I was really bummed to have messed it up and yeah, I just kept going because there is no way I was going to lose momentum and rip back. So one edge of this shawl, which is this bottom edge, is completely, completely straight. And then there are these slip stitches like uh, center double decreases that make this nice faux seam along the thing and the shape starts out where you are increasing equally on both sides and then you get to the halfway point and <laughs> then on the one side you're supposed to and you can see right here this is where I messed up. I'm not supposed to have two points here. From this point here, it's supposed to go just down. So basically I have like this extra, this extra flap. I, I messed up with the decreases and the pattern. It's supposed to be like this and form like a straight line all the way down to the tip of the shawl. And you can see, oh, that's the edge of the shawl. Um, and you can see that no, no longer is the faux seam in the center, but it gets longer and all the stitches eventually get moved over to the one side. And so basically I forgot to do some decreasing right in this area here. And I, I was about at this point over here when I realized that I messed up something and I, I just wasn't going to rip it out. So, yeah, um, I mean, look, I'm gonna wear it scrunched up. I have no idea how I even had it the first time I had to fuss with it. So this is gonna be like one of those things I have to kind of keep, keep fussing with along the way of figuring out how on earth to wear this thing. But um, it's pretty, it's like, a really good colorway for the fall so I'm really really glad that I finished it now because we are just getting to the point where the nights are starting to get a little bit chilly and yeah this is this is just gonna be really really nice to curl up in so yeah I, I have no idea what I'm what I'm doing here we're just gonna go with it I might actually take it off because it's actually not that cool out today we are still in the low 70s um yeah so maybe I'll just take it off maybe I'll leave it on but that is my finished object did I say that it is called the going somewhere shawl I don't remember I think I did maybe but this is officially uh, the Going Somewhere Shawl, and it is a pattern by Stephanie Sheeman. I never know if her name is pronounced Shyman or Sheeman. I'll write it on the screen, but she is the owner of Wonderland Yarns, and she made this pattern, and it is super fun. Um, I don't know if the pattern is actually on Ravelry. It might just be on the Wonderland Yarns website. So but it is definitely on the Wonderland, Yar Wonderland Yarns website. So I will link to that pattern for you guys in the comments and in the comments, not in the comments, in the description box. Oh, you know, where I link things, it will be linked. And 
yeah I love it I think it's really pretty and it's it's warm because of the wool content but it's also like a little bit cool because it's got like wool and silk blend I'll have to see um, exactly what the blend is so I'll have all that information. If I haven't already put it on the screen, I will try to put it on the screen for you guys in the description. And I think we can now move on to my whips. And there's a big story with one of my whips that I was hoping to have done by my birthday. It's a really, really sad story. So let's move on into whips and I'll tell you all about it. Are you guys ready to hear my sad, sad story? It involves my Miserina tea by Caitlin Hunter. I was so proud of how this one was coming along and I had just finished the color work section last time I showed it to you. And now we're back to here. What happened, you guys want to know? Oh my goodness. All right, so I I now have the little lace section. That, so now I have done the beginning again. And we're ready to start the color work. And honestly, I started, I ripped it out actually before I went to Phoenix. So like right after I recorded the last podcast, which at this point was six seven maybe even eight weeks ago i yeah it, it was a while ago it was like the end of july right at the beginning of august i frogged this thing all the way back to the short rows i redid the short rows and redid the lace why would i do such a thing well i i, I love this podcast for so many reasons <laughs> One of which is that you guys look at things and you tell me what I do wrong and ask if I did it wrong, like intentionally or not. And that's what happened this, this time. One of you, I don't remember, I don't remember who it was, I'm sorry, but right after posting that episode, I, I got a very lovely comment from, from one of you viewers and you asked if I had intentionally left out the cables in between the color work repeat pattern. I had not done that on purpose. I don't know why, but I, I saw that there was another chart there for the cables. So it's the yoke chart. This won't give anything away about the pattern, just how it's laid out is that the, the yoke chart has like, two separate charts to it but the instructions don't say to make sure that you follow both charts so it says to go on to the yoke color work chart and so i did but i even though i knew there were cables in between the color work motif i saw that as a separate chart and i just my brain didn't put it together that i was supposed to be alternating color work chart, cable chart, and like that that was a continuous thing that eventually would merge together when you finished the chart. Um, I did consider leaving it and just omitting the cables at that point, but there were different counts of increases in the cable chart that then because I hadn't done the cable chart, it meant that I had missed increases and I, my, the, the stitch count was not going to be correct. And I, you know, the fit in all of those things weren't going to be accurate. So before I thought about it too much more, I just, I just ripped it all out and I said, you know what, I really love how this is looking, but I don't want to knit something that I'm not going to be able to wear. And I want to do it right. So I ripped it back and now we're here. But you guys can see, I'm going to show you, I have in fact put those little cables in between the lace repeats 
So now it is set up correctly to continue the little cables in between the color work repeats. So now it is correct. It's just way back. Um, and I was still hoping to finish this one by my birthday, but I just, I didn't have, I wasn't putting my time to knitting. I was dedicating all my time to getting the website and my shop up, which was so much work. So I, this has just been sitting and it is waiting for me to pick it back up again. But, um, so uh, I was actually hoping to have this as a sample for when my shop opened because it's using my singles base, which I have not knit with before. This is the first project I'm knitting with it. Um, so I wanted to have that as like a finished sample to show you guys, but I don't, but it's, it's amazing. I really like it. And I'll show you in case you hadn't seen what colors I'm using for the color work. Instead of doing just a two color, color work pattern I am doing three colors and these two I dyed with avocado and this one I dyed with um, mulberry leaves so this is dyed with mulberry leaves in my singles base and then these two were done with avocado the pink was just with avocado on its own and the tan purplish tannish I think this one's more like a tan was modified after it was pink with iron so that's what I'm using that is the sad story of my miserina tea and I'll get back to working on it sometime eventually yeah it's a short sleeve little t-shirt so we'll see if I work on it right away or if I like hold off on that for a little while it would be nice to work on it and have it as a sample for the shop so maybe I'll maybe I'll get back to it now but I don't really feel the rush to get it done since I'm not really gonna be able to wear it unless I layered another thing over it because it's gonna get cold soon and I'm still so fidgety oh my goodness okay so let's go in. I have actually a new cast on that I started before or right after I got back from Phoenix. I can't remember exact timing, but I've never showed it to you guys before. And I think we should go talk about that one instead of the sad state of Miserina. So yeah, let's move on to new cast ons. Okay, so my new cast on is actually a camisole. I've never knit a camisole before. And I was thinking about, uh, blah, blah, blah. I was thinking about what projects to bring with me to Phoenix, where it was like an oven uh, in August and that I didn't wanna bring wool projects with me. And so I thought, well, I have this linen that I got. So this is um, Antigone, 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 I think it's Antigone, um, by Naturum Nature, Natura de Rodum Natura. I don't know. I think it's French. I, yeah, I think it's French. Um, anyway, it is a linen. This is the colorway Prunel. I picked this yarn up at fiber space when i visited oh i want to say it was maybe mother's day weekend last year and then i didn't know what to knit with it and i hadn't done anything with it so when sari nordland published her sunset camisole pattern using the same exact yarn just a different color i said perfect i already have the yarn for it I am a sucker for a ruffle, and so I was really excited to cast that on. All right, and now it looks like this. All of my projects coordinate for this video. This is such a nice, like, brown autumnal video. All right, I have to un untwist this. Bear with me a moment. 
<laughs> this is what happens when things sit in your project bag untouched for, you know, weeks. Is that it? When you take it out again, it is all untangled. It's all a tangled, tangled mess. Okay. Where is this? I gotta get my needle through this hole there. It's like a puzzle. Uh, dear. Here we go. Oh, oh, we are looking like a camisole. I don't remember which is the front or which is the back. I think at this point it doesn't matter. I think it's gonna be whichever side looks less wonky is gonna be the front, I think, is, is what it's gonna be. Um, why is this, there we go, all right. It's, it, it now kinda of looks like a little bra top, like the beginnings of it. So basically, we are seriously under construction here. What I have done is I've knit the four identical triangles in the linen and I have connected it and I have gone around a couple times so there's a, there's a little bit going on below the armhole but not much um, and so basically from here all I have to do is stock a net and increase I think like every two inches or something until it's the length that it should be or that I want it to be. And then like the tank top will be done, the camisole will be done. You can choose to leave it as just a solid camisole, no ruffle, or you can put the, the frill, what she calls frill on it. And it's like this diagonal frill. I don't know which way it goes, probably doesn't matter, but of course I'm gonna do that. Um, but at the point where it doesn't have the frill, I might even start wearing it a little bit as like a base layer underneath things for the winter. I don't know. We'll see. I have to get to that point first. And then maybe when it gets closer to the summer months, I add the frill and it becomes like its own top. So yeah, so not like a whole lot to show, but it's certainly like a construction that I've never done before. It matches beautifully with everything else that I'm showing you guys today. And that's my project and my new cast on. I have one other whip to share with you guys and that falls in my knitworthy category. So let's swing on into knitworthy. All right. I gotta, I gotta pick up the pace here. I've got about 10 more minutes before it is time to get Owen from the bus. So, okay. Obviously, my Knitworthy project is for Mr. Owen. And, oh man, I also had hoped to have this done by now. Owen is now in fourth grade. Oh my goodness, you guys, he was like, five or six when I started podcasting. I think he was maybe newly six or newly five. I don't know. He was in first grade and now he's in fourth grade. And I've been podcasting for just about three years, which is kind of crazy. Um, anyway, so I had hoped to knit him a sweater for his back to school, like fourth grade school photo pictures. And I'm actually like, making good progress like if i had w once i know when school pictures are like maybe i should bust through the rest of it this weekend just because like undoubtedly next week a thing's gonna come home and be like your school pictures are tomorrow right they, they don't give a whole lot of notice anyway so i cast on for him the flax sweater by tin can knits and i've made pretty good progress on it i have like almost the whole body done like I might have the whole body done I have to kind of measure it I did option two which is to just cast on underneath the neckband because I wanted to add like a contrast color neckband and 
probably a contrast color for the hem. I've got some solid orange and solid blue, which until about a month ago were his favorite colors. Kids, you guys, kids. So for years, orange and blue has been Owen's favorite color combination. A little bit more on the blue than the orange, but together. And I'm pretty sure it stemmed from Blippi. Because now he's like, I don't like Blippi anymore, so I don't like blue and orange anymore. You know what he likes now? Pink. Pink and purple and teal. My favorite colors, which I'm fine with that, but... I bought this yarn when Spin Cycle released this yarn and I saw that it was blue and orange. This is their new Trine yarn, which is a three ply. I said, I've got to get that for Owen. It's his favorite colors. Well, hopefully he'll still like the sweater. I'm also like, I need to check my gauge because I, I did do a gauge swatch when I got this yarn I, I did a swatch, I did a couple of, and I did it in the round. Like I did the things that I was supposed to do. I don't know that I checked the pattern gauge before. That, you know, that's an obvious thing. Check the pattern gauge. Don't just make a gauge swatch and just, you know, use the needles that you like. I went with the, with the, the needle size because I usually have really good luck. And goodness knows I cannot tell you. I can tell you that I used two different needle sizes for my swatch. I think maybe a seven and an eight. And then I cast on with a seven. But you guys, like, does this look kind of narrow? I can't tell if it's just because I'm used to knitting adult things and I haven't knit a children's garment in a while if it's also because it's missing sleeves and a neckband and a hem. But to me, I feel like, I don't know, I'm knitting the largest children's size. So this is a size 8 to 10, which is the largest size before the extra small for adults. So I figured it was going to be big, if anything. But now I'm looking at it and I'm just, I'm just wondering, I mean, maybe it's going to be okay. It's also super wash, I believe. So it should also, I should be able to block it out a little bit too, if it is super wash. So we'll see. So yeah, I mean, the body is basically done. I have to double check the length and kind of hold it up to, to Owen and because he's got like a longer torso than like his legs are shorter and his torso, he's built like my husband who's got long torso short legs. I'm the opposite. I've got, I'm like all legs and then really, really scrunched up torso. I hate it. Um, yeah. If I had my husband's torso and my legs, I'd be super tall, but I don't. I've got scoliosis, which like makes me all kinds of scrunchy and twisty and turny. Anyway. Um, so yeah, this is, it's coming along. I need to get back to it because I have a feeling that school pictures are going to be soon and it would be nice for him to wear a hand knit thing for his school pictures. So we'll see how that goes. I've got spinning to share with you. So let's go right on over into spinning. I am just about out of time. My alarm is going to go off in three minutes, but I have a spinning finished object that I'm so excited to share with you. Maybe when Owen comes home, he'll let me finish up recording. Uh, we'll see. But this is all finished. It is the Staycation blend from, I think it was the June this past June, Paradise Fibers Club. It's so drapey. You guys see how drapey that is? It is about 160, 106, no, 116, I think, yards. I think it's just 116. 160 would be nice, but I don't think so. Um, this is gorgeous. It is a blend of 
60% I think Polworth wool, 20% undyed, it's all undyed, all three fibers are undyed, undyed yak, and 20% mulberry silk. It's gorgeous. And I had finished the singles a while ago, and Owen is now back in theater rehearsals, and so I'm back at the historical site spinning during his rehearsals, and I was able to get this all plied together. And yeah, when I blocked my shawl the other day, this was finished, and I, I was able to, to wash it and thwack it and let it dry and yeah. So it's, it's good, it's finished. And I have a spinning whip that I started too, but I think I should wait until after I pick up Owen to tell you guys about that. So hopefully he'll let me do like 10 more minutes of podcasting because I'm so close to being done, but I'm not. That's my alarm. All right, I'll be back. Okay, I am back and I've got Owen outside playing on the swing for a few minutes so that I can finish up. So I only need like a couple more minutes, but I have a spinning whip that I started just yesterday actually um, during theater rehearsal. So this is what I have spun so far and this is pretty fancy this is depigmented yak and so this came in the same paradise fibers package over the summer it was june and so i think this is two ounces of depigmented yak i'm finding it really really tricky to spin um yeah it's it Let's see. So this is like the staple length is about like this. There we go. And so I'm actually I'm finding it like really slippery and really hard. Like I have to put a lot of twist into it for it to to stay together. But it is like a cloud. It is so soft. So this is my first time spinning yak. Um, just doing this uh, single right now, which is not my normal, normally when I do a singles, I try to get it more like fingering weight. This is definitely thicker than that, probably closer to a DK, maybe even worsted, not sure. So I think if I were to do a two ply, this is going to end up being maybe worsted or Aaron, maybe worsted or Aaron, maybe even bulky. So, um, that was just Owen coming, coming back in to go to potty. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so, um, this is, this is different, slippery, gorgeous, soft, like a cloud. It is so good. All right, you guys. So that is actually everything. Like I was so close to being finished. But obviously the thing that I am so excited about is that tomorrow, Monday, September 25th. So depending on when you're watching this, if you're watching this on Sunday, then we'll be coming out tomorrow. My shop will be open. So I hope that you guys will visit. Um, the only thing is right now I am shipping only within the United States. So I, I just, just to get started at least, I'm not sure what kind of demand there might be for my naturally dyed yarn outside of the United States. I know that you guys are viewers from lots of places over the world. So um, I will consider expanding shipping beyond the United States, especially if you guys let me know that you really want me to. So just leave me a comment. Um, let me know where you're located if you are. Remember to like and subscribe to my mom's <laughs> YouTube channel. Hi, Owen. Hi. Ooh, hi you're Felix. cute. Yeah, do you want to say goodbye for everyone? <laughs> yeah. Um, 
yeah so let me know if if you're not in the United States and you really were hoping to get your hands on some of my yarn let me know where you are I will start looking into shipping it just it was a lot of over overwhelming stuff Felix wants to say hi Felix mm -hmm. is getting really fluffy again <laughs> so no, all right uh, you want to do the goodbyes this is, very is that really messy. soft right that's yak do you know what a yak is? Can I keep it? Yeah. Do you know what yak is? Yes. What is it? It's yak. It's yak. <laughs> I'll show you later. It's a it's a big animal with luxurious wool. <laughs> I have luxurious wool. You're a silly pants. All right. Then tell you everybody to goof. tell everybody. Thank you so. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for watching. Cut. Wait, well, no, no, no. Check out my shop. Tell them all to visit my, my new shop. I'll visit my mom's new Rubik's Cube shop. No, not Rubik's Cube shop. I'll make my own shop. Later. Naturally dyed yarn. Stop dropping it.com. I will see you guys all in another video soon. I love you all. Peace. Bye. <laughs> Here, Mom.